And these guys are feisty. I will tell you right now. Ooh, baby. <laughs> All right, everybody, so this is going to be the first of many pigeon updates. Uh, as I promised, we were gonna be talking about several different things, and one of my hobbies and stuff that I would like to share with you is about pigeons. What we're gonna be taking a look at today is my team of breeding birds, if you will, and kind of their daily regiment, um, what they're looking like, what kind of birds we've got right now, the babies, the plan a little bit if we have time to get into that for what I'm gonna be doing from a racing standpoint this week. But all in all, it's gonna be pretty cool. Now, my caveat for you all is I am not by any means a racing pigeon expert. What I do have is a little bit of knowledge that I've learned from some good people, and I'm happy to share that with you, as well as please feel free to throw in the comments below if you think I'm doing anything at all wrong or could be doing it better. I always wanna learn, and I'd love to hear it from you. All right, so we are inside. Yes, right now I keep, I'm, I get distracted here. I've got a little flip out lens so I can see what the heck's happening, but I will look at you. Um, we're inside here. Right now I have all of my breeders in cages and I'm gonna show you what that looks like really quick. Right here. And these uh, cages I got from, I believe, Global, Glo Global Pigeon Supply. And then they come with these little bowls and we have something pretty sweet here. So it says, hey now, you watch yourself. Ooh, baby. All right, a um, couple different things. So all of the breeders have their independent nest bowls. And then I just flipped one of these extra bowls that I've got over um, to utilize as a little bit of a perch. They have paper. I just used uh, butcher paper here, slides underneath. Obviously no birds here, no paper needed. And then we have some little babies. Check those out. Let's do that. And these guys are feisty. I will tell you right now. Ooh, baby. I am a mean little sucker. So we have these pairs and these birds here. So we've got one pair, two pair. We've got another. Holy cow. Y'all just th laid three eggs. What? I'll be honest with you. That does not happen all that often, I believe. Well, we've got three eggs here. This is another pair. We have another pair that we're actually gonna be putting together here. It's a little uh, a little blue bar hen. All right, getting a little dark down here. Let's see if we can for you. Uh, yeah, a little better there. Okay, so a little blue bar hen and then A blue check cock bird there. And over here we have a blue check and then a black hen. Blue check is a cock bird and black hen. Um, yeah, again, another blue bar and then a red bar. And they are also sitting on, she's also sitting, she's got one, she's got one egg in there, yeah. A little feisty too, aren't you? And then up here we have um, the first set of racing producers and they're actually already raised a little, they've already raised a pair and I've got those birds sent off to one of the two races I'm gonna enter this year. Um, so these are actually uh, Kenny Rhodes birds from Protege Loft. He said, I bought those this pair from him. And then um, this pair here, our birds from Lou Coletta, and these are uh, their first, let's see here. These are their first pair of birds that they are working on raising, and they're pretty cute little fluff balls. They are not far, they're just a little over two weeks old. Already got bands on both of them, but let's get up here, little baby. Get up here, little baby. Now, aren't you just a, a cute little thing? We've got, um, stay put. You want up there, I hear you. But pretty dang cute. They're getting in that fluff ball stage. And 
are not far away from, here, let me just put you back, put you back, not far away from vaccinations, which will happen at, uh, we'll do it about 20, 21 days here. So another week, they'll be ready for vaccinations, but because these birds are two weeks old or just over two weeks old, we've got our second nesting bowl in here. These guys should, within the next oh, seven to 10 days should probably lay their next set of eggs for the racing season. But that is a little bit of an update on a crew. And now what I wanna show you, what I'm actually doing on the daily as far as feeding and caring for these guys. This will be kind of the, the feed plan for all of the birds here in the breeding program. We'll get set up for that. All right, so each one of these bowls, we've got water. And I keep this little five gallon bucket to help clean things out. We've got their feed bin, which is, 99% of the time empty, and if it's not empty, need to actually be, uh, that's like a good indication that we're probably overfeeding a little bit. Okay, so, um, and then the last is their little grit bin. I change that out daily, and this is um, essentially a calcium supplements that they can kind of pick at. And then they have, the last thing is a picking stone that they each have access to within their little so you get a little bit of everything. What I end up doing here is stacking all three of those bowls once I've cleaned them out together and then roll through each of the individual pins. but not least, you guys down here hiding on the bottom. Okay, so now that that's ready, we're gonna start with grit. And this is actually um, by Ver Versalaga, I think is how you say that, or close to that. Um, it's spelled v Verselle, V-E-R-S-E-L-E, -E, I think, and then dash Laga. Um, but this is a really interesting grid. It's got little pumice stone pieces in it, other red rock in it, and then some shells and some other mixture of different things. Uh, I tried just a red rock grit before, and I mean, the birds drastically like this better than what they seem to the other. So it means that there's stuff in here that they seem to be needing. So we're gonna go ahead and throw um, the birds that are eating a little bit more, that have the babies, they get a little more grit. Everybody else is getting approximately a teaspoon because I'm changing it out every single day. So I'm trying to minimize waste by still providing them enough. Go about a teaspoon per bird. Move through this fairly, oop, pretty quick here. A little extra for y'all. And then I go ahead and slide those bowls Slide these bowls all the way to the back. And they usually get after that pretty quick. So I've actually got my little weekly calendar. This was written up for me by Lou, who I've kind of essentially um, apprenticed under and I don't even call it apprenticeship. He's helping me out. He gives me information, makes recommendations, tells me, answers my silly questions. So uh, bless his heart, he's been very helpful. Um, today, we're actually utilizing peanut butter on the feet. So we take creamy peanut butter and melt it so that it is, and you have to add a little bit of oil so it's oily enough. Um, and then that goes on the feed. And what we're essentially accomplishing with that is the peanut butter has niacin, it's B3. So niacin is supposed to be good for feather growth development um, and we'll be preparing that today as well as their water kind of changes throughout the week. Um, apple cider vinegar is a big thing from an acidifier as well as supposed to help with gut health and stuff like that um, and they say it holds true. That's a, that's a people thing but they say it holds true for the pigeons so we'll be utilizing that in their water and um, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay so we get 
a little bit of our peanut butter in here. And then in order to get it to the point where we can actually add it to the feed, we need just a little splash of oil. Um, this is garlic oil. Garlic's supposed to be a natural antibiotic. And we'll start with that. And then we're gonna actually run over, throw this in the microwave. Once this start mixes, mixes pretty good already with um, just a little bit of oil in it. Warm this up and it'll melt even better. This is the, probably one of the piddliest meals as far as everything else goes. Most of the time we, do, we just give normal feed for them, but it's nice and supposed to be really important, which comes from the peanut butter. I'll be right back. All right. Nope, we need more. We need more! Yeah, it's getting closer. Look at that, it's kind of soupy. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We need more. Ooh. That's it, should look like liquid. If it doesn't look like liquid, ain't gonna happen. Let's go throw this on some feed. All right, so when we are back here, We've got our soupy peanut butter mix stuff. We need to add this to some feed. Now, for each person trying to figure out how much feed their birds need, this is like an extremely common question. And the answer is, I don't really know. Okay, so it's a super common question. Everybody's asking, how much do I feed my birds? And when I was searching the internet, it's like anywhere from one ounce to one tablespoon to two tablespoons to two ounces, depending on if they're flying, depending on if they're, basically what I found out is kind of feed them up until the point to where they are um, starting to leave feed, then cut them back a little bit, somewhere between 15, 25%. And what I've found for my birds is three tablespoons of the breeder mix, which is Des Moines pigeon feed, is what they will clean up on the daily. So we're gonna take our peanut butter and we're going to add this to, add it to the feed here. I'll kind of show you what this looks like when you finish it up. Come on now, get it all out of there. I never get it all out of the bowl, so I kind of uh, add a little bit extra in anticipation of not getting all of it. <laughs> and, and then stuff like that happens and it's like, eh. Come on. All right, so now you stay there. We'll mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. And just keep mixing. That's why it's got to be really soupy slash oily. That better it coats your feed. Um, it always seems like it's never going to coat all of the feed, but then if you just keep mixing, it does a pretty good job. If you get really big clumpy areas, then you don't have it. Uh, you probably don't have a, enough oil in it or something to that effect. You can break that up by your hand, but the pigeons don't really seem to like it. It's got to be a light coating. And then I use, so the next thing we're gonna talk about, we incorporate probiotics into daily feed, or not daily feed, but weekly. There's probiotics in there. Um, I utilize just a little bit of those probiotics on here because the powder kind of takes some of the stick off of the feed and it makes it easier to scoop and ration out and the birds seem to eat it better. Now, the company with the probiotics specifically told me that it's it kind of needs the water to really activate them. So we're using it, in this case, not as, as good as its purpose really will be. So we'll just add here 
Just a little bit, not a lot. That's drastically less than even what I would use. But when you get that, when it, that I would use per gallon of water for them, but then you get, it'll actually kind of pour out of the spoon. Otherwise that peanut butter feed all sticks in there. So we're gonna go around. Every pair is gonna get three tablespoons of feed. You guys, you guys have extra here. We'll talk about why. All right, come on, babies. You want fresh feed, they said. And then those bowls move back. One, two, three for a pair. One. A one, a two. Three. Okay, so now, the other thing I mentioned for today is the cider water. And I've been using, because of the number of birds that I have and the fact that I'm rationing out an individual, if I had everybody in a loft, I would just use like a one gallon uh, jug, or if you have a much larger loft, I would use obviously mixing into a bigger container. One gallon is about right for the birds that I have. Um, this is the Bragg's apple cider, organic vinegar, unfiltered raw something. Some, I don't think it says raw on there. Raw, unfiltered, yeah, it does. And we'll take and pour through this. Now the birds that are feeding babies, they need drastically more water. They go through a ton of water because they're eating enough for themselves. They're eating enough for their babies to feed them. And it takes water. We need water. All right, let me get this refilled. And again, what we're doing is one, uh, just one tablespoon per gallon. That was the recommended amount the recommended amount of cider. Now, I know what you are already saying to yourself right this minute is, yeah, dang, Ethan, that's a lot of stuff to do. Well, today is a little more challenging than other days, but all in all, um, I'm going with the whole uh, trust the system type of thing right now, because I don't know anything about this. Okay. Got another gallon. We're gonna go ahead and get the rest of these filled up. Now we do have one slight difference for these birds. Anybody that's feeding babies, they're getting a full bowl full. They use most of that every day. Everybody that's not feeding babies, they get about half of a bowl full and usually don't use all of that in a day. Um, we've got one exception and I mix these up. So anytime you have to give a bird antibiotics, and it was a recommendation, I've got a bird that has laid this pair here. They've laid two sets of eggs now and the babies have died essentially before they were born. They were dead in the eggs, they abandoned them, and I was given two thought processes. Either they got chilled and they left them, which could have happened. It just happened to fall when their eggs were ready to hatch, right at times where we had that like terrible arctic blast and then before then it was another cold spell so ah the other thing was that uh, the hen may have salmonella which would actually be killing the babies and we have um, antibiotics in this jug with a little check off now the key to any type of antibiotics you have to give your birds starting with distilled water is supposed to be the ticket so she's getting um Antibiotic water, we are on day eight. And it says uh, 10 to 14 days to, to be helpful. Well, folks, that is my feeding regime, if you will. A little introduction to my birds. We're definitely gonna be back with more talking about individual birds, maybe have the opportunity to show you kind of what things look like. But from here, folks, um, I'm gonna call that a day. The guy with the pink gun signing off, and we will see you in the next video. Remember to 
comment down below. What do you want to see? What do you want me to show you? Ask questions. I'll be happy to answer them. I'm looking forward to it, guys. Thanks for watching.